Highlights of the Africa Cup are brought to you by Bintook Draft, proud supporters of Namibia Rugby. The journey to the 24th of September when Namibia faced world champions New Zealand at the stadium Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park has been an arduous one to say the least. Faced with several challenges along the way, including the resignation of former coach Dani Vermeulen, the Namibians have shown remarkable resilience. After a disastrous Nations Cup campaign in Romania in June, Namibia bounced back to record an historic series win over Russia which saw the side, now under former British line Phil Davis, rise to number 20 on rugby's world rankings. A huge contributing factor to Namibia's success has been the intense strength and conditioning program the players have been put through. Visit the Hagi Gango Stadium at any time, any day of the week, and you'll find the Namibian players hard at work under the watchful eye of strength and conditioning coach, former Welsh international Wayne Proctor. Yeah, there's been a number of, of changes, all positive, I hope. Um, it's, it's been very interesting uh, since, since, since being here. Uh, what we have had is a captivated audience with regards to the players. They've been nothing short of superb. Um, very unique in terms of their own uh, position. You know, many of them have had to juggle uh, the demands of uh, um, a full day's work with the demands of uh, um, a professional rugby organisation. And we've tried to get that professionalism as close as we possibly could and, and can and to uh, an international environment. And this has been made possible by establishing a high performance center on the premises of the Hagi Gangob Stadium. So it's from the training ground back to the gym and back to training ground without wasting valuable time. From doing gym work in a container or outside in the sun, Namibia's fitness program has come a long way in just a few months. I think it's the outcome of, of, of many people's collective effort. Um, you know, I can't speak highly enough of people's um, want of trying to move the whole um, of Namibia rugby forward. There's been countless, countless individuals who have kind of put a lot of work and a lot of effort into establishing the gym in its current state. There's still a little bit of work to go, by the way, um, and hoping that we can kind of get everyone involved from referees to, to local school children, the next generation, so on and so forth, and some of the current stars that will end up going um, to England to play in this, this Rugby World Cup. There's a massive character in terms of Rugby World Cup. I think the, pe the, the penny has finally dropped in terms of they really want to go there and do themselves, their families and the country, that justice. So yeah, I think at, at the moment, every, everything is positive, but we're under no illusions of the size of the task and more importantly, what needs to be done between now and then. We're in a very advantageous position in as much as we, we have um, a fantastic opportunity to go and, and train in a training camp against the Springbok. Which again, you know, if it, this doesn't, if that doesn't bring out the best in this group of players, then I don't know what will. So, you know, there's a lot to be done and put in place between now and with, by the time they, they they land in England. So it was a fitter and stronger team that resumed the Africa Cup campaign at home against Kenya, following two victories over Kenya and Tunisia respectively. Zimbabwe were leading the standings, and this match had a lot riding on it. Namibia had to win to stay in the race for the Africa Cup. Just over a year ago, Kenya defeated Namibia 29-22 in Madagascar, almost destroying Namibia's World Cup ambitions. Before the return match against Kenya, a special moment in the Namibia dressing room, former Namibian captain Gerard Munz presented the players with their match jerseys. An inspirational message. Between 1990 and 94, Munz made 27 appearances, scoring 27 tries with a 75% winning average. Yeah, as I've said to the guys in the in the talk room, I mean, it's not every rugby player that has got the opportunity and the privilege to actually play in a World Cup, one of the biggest sports events in the world. Um, so I know that the guys will go out and and for this time around, they will definitely go and compete and not just take part. Before kickoff, in front of a big crowd at the Hagi Gangop Stadium, the traditional introduction to the dignitaries. On this occasion, the teams were introduced to Namibia's Deputy Minister of Sport, Youth and National Service, Agnes Chongarero. In the Namibian lineup, two debutants, University of Western Cape Bay scrum half Damien Stevens and UJ loose forward Vian Conradi. We pick up play in the 10th minute with scores level at 3 all after the fly halves, Tienz Kortza and Darwin Mukidza had exchanged penalties. The referee, South Africa's Esejo Lejote, 
A regular visitor to Namibia after he also handled the first test in the Vintook Draft Friendship Series against Russia. This is a good drive from Namibia. Ball in the hands of Captain Jacques Berger. Vastly experienced. Namibia's forwards certainly dominant. They've gained 10 metres here. Stevens, the scrum half away, goes for Lander. Just back from injury. Half break, sets it up nicely. Going left, an opportunity here. Big chance for the try. Drive for the line and over goes Cassandra Buerta. Porto slotted the conversion, added a second penalty for a 13-6 lead to the hosts after Mukidza kicked a second penalty for Kenya. Maybe were forced to work hard to break down Kenya's defence and had to wait until the 33rd minute for the next score. Again, Berger at the fulcrum of this drive. The rolling ball getting closer and closer. Penalty, Lacorte says. This court so wants to take it quickly and goes for the line. Over the line. But the referee will pull them back. And the penalty will be taken on the spot. Kotsa thinking quickly again. The kick to the far touch line. Oh, beautifully done. Falanda scores. Completely unmarked. Falanda plays a new Plymouth in New Zealand for Spotswood United. Superb thinking by Flyhalf Kotsa. Two minutes before half time now. A dangerous period for Namibia. In the two test matches against Russia, they conceded tries just before the break. And in the weeks between the Vintage Draft Friendship Series and the Africa Cup, they worked hard at ensuring they stay focused for the full 40 minutes of each half. Kotsa, lovely skip pass. He's benefited from the coaching of Peter Rousseau. Philander just stepping past his opposite number, shrugging off a tackle and inside pass. Della Harp goes over. What fantastic running rugby by this Namibia side. That is one of the finest tries you'll see at this Hagi Gangob Stadium. Conversion wasn't successful, and so Namibia went into the halftime break leading by 25 points to six. Two minutes into the second half now, Namibia comfortably leading and on the attack once again. Strong scrum by Namibia. The front row of Jaco Engels, a super rugby winner at Loosehead with the Bulls a few years ago. And hookers, free state cheaters, Thorsten van Jarsveld and a tight head, University of Stellenbosch's AJ de Klerk. Plenty of competition for the places in the World Cup side, so the intensity high, lovely pop ball inside to Della Harp. Setting up another good platform. Quick ball. Stevens' pass uh, is eventually picked up and driven towards the line. Vian Conradi. Out wide, space. Bumping off one. Powerful frame of Marea. Jaco Engels drives it up. Five meters out now. Quick ball needed. And they get it. Stevens. Puts his boot. A kind bounce. And the over goes to Lahap. His second try. Very disciplined rugby. And a good piece of work in the beginning of that move by number eight. Leneev Damons, who's in his third international, a former Free State Craven Week player, who also represented the South African schools in 2011. And a good uh, attacking scrum option here for Namibia. Ronaldo Botma, the Pumas and Sharks number eight, has uh, replaced Leneev Damons at number eight. He goes down now at the back of the scrum in the number 19 jersey. He made his debut for Namibia at the Rugby World Cup uh, tournament in Madagascar last year in the qualifying. He picks up now and drives. Kenyans really struggling to defend here and the referee has awarded the penalty try. Well, they really are suffering. They lost Isaiah Nyakiri to injury and Curtis Lilako has had a tough time at the hands of the uh, Cheetahs new signing uh, Johannes uh, Kutsia and replaced AJ de Klerk. So Namibia now leading by 39 points to 6. Quarter of an hour remaining and Namibia in full control. Quick ball at the line out here is Berger again. Looking for options wide. Della Harp takes it up. 22 metre line. Spreading it wide. Kotza. Space on the outside for Conrad Maria. Well tackled. 10 metres out. Pull back to Zanderbuerta. Tries to steal on the short side. Away it goes again. The pop up for Jaco Engels. They struggle to bring him down. First tackler Oliver Mangieni. 
and over goes Botler for the try. Well, it's the sixth try of the match, and Namibia in full control. Kotsa did slot the conversion for a personal contribution of 16 points, and Namibia extending their lead to 46 points to six with just 10 minutes remaining. A dominant performance. Into the final few minutes of the match now, Kenya well and truly beaten, but showing some spirit. And their never say die attitude finally paid off when left wing Jacob Oji scored under the posts after a trademark counter attack by the visitors. This made the final score 46 13 to Namibia, who felt they'd wasted a number of scoring opportunities but had some satisfaction, raising the memory of that 29 22 defeat against the East Africans in Madagascar last year. We're happy now. We're, in the, we're working in the right direction. You know, we've got it's three wins on the trot now, and, uh, and and leading up to a World Cup, that's very important to get some confidence in the boys. So uh, um, I'm happy with the progress. You know, we we're working very very hard during the week, and and on the weekends um, we, we're putting a lot of new things into play, and uh, we, we're finding our feet. So um, I'm, I'm I'm happy with the way we, we're going at the moment. Look, Chui Yonivi was named Vintuk Draft Man of the Match and received his reward from Namibia Brewery's Tian Horn and Dani Strauss, Vice President of the NRU. Yonivi, who plays for Breve in France, is improving in every match he plays for the country. I think we're, we're working really hard and the team atmosphere is growing. The team the technical aspect is growing, so we're very excited and we can only move forward from here. A third consecutive and confidence-boosting win for Namibia as they take their preparations for Rugby World Cup 2015 to another level. But there was still work to be done as the Africa Cup champion for 2015 was to be decided. Coming up next, all the action from the Africa Cup final between Namibia and Zimbabwe. We're back with international rugby for the Namibian capital, Vintuk. In the absence of captain Jacques Berger, who had to return to England, former Western Province and Stormers lose forward Rowan Kitzoff as the automatic choice to replace Berger as captain. And in fact, had done so with great success in the previous few years. He recently relocated to Vintuk and now has a full-time job for the first time in his life as a system maintenance engineer for Namibia Breweries. Having to juggle a full-time job with preparing for a World Cup, he now has a bit more understanding for the amateur ranks. Yes, definitely. Much more empathy with those guys. Um, having to work 8 to 5 and then afterwards have to go train, um, you get the first hand experience of what it's like to, to be in that position. Um, yeah, you don't get that um, irritated anymore when a guy rocks up late coming from work. So, yeah, it's, 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 you have much more empathy. If you want to be one of the 31 people going to the World Cup, you have to be willing to make sacrifices, and that's why the working group gets up at five to be at the gym at six and then afterwards you go from straight from work to be that five and you train till eight so um, there's not, not a lot of off time but after World Cup there will be a lot of off time so for now you'll have to dig deep and graft a bit. I think preparation wise on the field we're much much better prepared. Condition wise I think we're vastly better than we were um, four years ago so I feel all in all I think we're at a very good stage preparation wise and um, we'll, we'll get a lot of confidence of the way we're preparing and with the new coaches brings a new insight into, into the game. Um, and like, like you said, there's a lot of professional guys as well this time around and a lot of young guys as well that bring a lot of energy. So I'm very confident and very excited about, about the World Cup 2015. I must say the guys that have been to the previous World Cup are very fortunate because last time we, we faced uh, the Samoan Haka and the Fijian Haka and after this World Cup we would face the All Black Haka and the Tongan Haka. So if you talk about Hakas internationally that's probably right there up with them. Um, yeah, I think once the 31 players are going to be announced the competition is going to be great um, within the camp. But also that, that much eluding first victory in the World Cup. Um, you want to be part of that team that faces the, the All Blacks, but more than that, you want to be part of that first Namibian team to win a game at the World Cup. Um, 
I think that, that, that's a story and that's a legacy that you can build for yourself and that's, that's a story you can will probably tell your grandchildren over a, a campfire and have a lemonade long, long when you, after playing rugby. And winning that first ever match at a Rugby World Cup remains Namibia's main goal. But first they had to focus on the task at hand and that was the Africa Cup final against Zimbabwe. Kitsov and his team arrived at the Hagi Gangov Stadium with a great deal of confidence. Behind them they had a convincing series win over Russia and an emphatic victory over Kenya the week before. Team manager Vessel Kotza had invited former Namibia legend Saro Losper to hand out the team jerseys. Losper played 18 matches for Namibia between 1990 and 91, but never played at a Rugby World Cup. It's special because you, you, you mingle with a lot of players that are much higher than you perform much higher than you, have better competitions than you. And if you take Namibian uh, context, we, if we take, we have six or eight clubs times 15. That's the only place that can qualify for a World Cup and make a team to a World Cup. So, so, so take it, that, that eight teams times 15. And not all of them are professionals, not all of them are ready to go and present the country in that kind of uh, competitions. But, but we are there. For the last five years, we have, of 20 years, we are there. And to add further luster to an already colourful day, one of the world's leading referees, Craig Joubert, was appointed to be in charge of this very important match, which would decide the Africa champions for 2015. And a brief and unique insight into the Namibian dressing room before kickoff. And if the Namibia team were looking for any further inspiration, it came in the form of their president and patron of the Namibian Rugby Union, Dr. Hayi Gangol took time off to support his team in their last match at home before they leave for the Rugby World Cup in England on September the 15th. Fantastic support indeed from the country's number one citizen and rugby fan. A typical windy August day in Vintuk and a winner-takes-all final between Namibia and Zimbabwe. The visitors took the early lead through a penalty from flyhoff Tichafara and Makwanya but it took the hosts a full 20 minutes to get into gear but once they did there was no stopping the Rugby World Cup bound side. Namibians used their rolling ball all afternoon with great effect and the first try scored by the captain, Rowan Kitzel. And a four-point lead after a successful conversion by Kotze. An attacking five-metre scrum. Fed by Arthur Boer. Powerful driving by the Namibian eight. Ronaldo Botman, his first start for Namibia, controlling things at the base of the scrum. Inching closer, Botman, unchallenged, goes over. Superb try, and the forwards controlling play for Namibia. The home team extending their lead now to 14 points to six. A rolling ball for Namibia, again prominent. Kotze, the long skip pass out wide. Stepping in, JC Kreiling brought down just short. No, he's over. The momentum carrying over. Kreiling gets the try. A third score for Namibia. The lead extended. Kreiling, who plays for Wesley Old College in Ireland, doing the damage. It's 21 points to six. Happy head coach Phil Davis and backline coach Peter Rousseau looking on. Another opportunity for Namibia on the Zimbabwean goal line. Zimbabwe pride themselves on their set pieces. No answer to Namibia's powerful set pieces and rolling balls. And it's Kitsoff who goes over for his second try. Second play. The captain having an absolute dream game as are the entire Namibian pack of forwards. Kotsa slotted a fourth consecutive conversion. And Namibia now led 28 points to six at half time. Five minutes into the second half, another set scrum. Bow well, into Kotze. Oh, lovely little show and go. And offloads. The easiest of tries in the end for Johan Deisel. But it was uh, beautifully crafted by fly half Tien's Kotze. The conversion made it 35 points to six. Maybe a rampant now, in control. A loose trio dominant, Botma takes it up. 
quick ball, Boa goes left. Long pass, it eventually does so. Uh, find the hands of Lokyako Fenta. Little kick ahead, and the chase, and the try! Russell van Veek going over. His fourth try in as many tests. Chasing down the kick ahead. And Namibia extend their lead now to 42 points to six. 15 minutes into the second half, and another powerful driving, rolling ball. Down they go. And Johnny Redling Hayes, Namibia's most capped player, scores try number seven. Smiles all round. Fots are on target with his conversion. 49 points to six. And a record score looming here for Namibia. Namibia took their foot off the pedal a little and had to wait another 10 minutes for their next score. Another effective scrum. Replacement uh, number nine, Beitendach. This is Kotzer. Drive for the line and over goes PJ van Lil. The eighth try for Namibia by PJ van Lil. 54 6 and still 10 minutes remaining. Zimbabwean fans, not much to cheer, but they're seeing an exhibition of superb forward play. The rolling mall dominant. It was a work of art for Namibia on the day. Walking this one over. Kitsov completed his hat trick. Zimbabwe. Well and truly beaten. Kotzer's conversion made it 61 points to 6. Namibia's flag flying high. Just over 14 months ago, Namibia had to work really hard to beat Zimbabwe. who almost qualified for the Rugby World Cup. But a huge difference. Amazing. The difference a full-time professional setup and strength and conditioning program can make. Picking up the kick ahead was Daisel linking up with Hreiling. Strong running, brought down just on the 22. Out wide again, Kotzer. Back inside, sniping in, and it's another try for Russell van Veek. Well, it's been a good week for him. His sister Steffi was crowned Miss Namibia just a week before. 61-6 became 66-6. And more to come from Namibia, relentless. They were driving for the line once again, not letting up. This is a side preparing well for the Rugby World Cup. And Luceford Duplessis rewarded for a top performance with a try. 73-6, Kotze starting his ninth conversion. Utterly dominant with Namibia. Showing that all the hard work in the last few months as they prepare for the date with destiny on September the 24th is starting to pay off. Zimbabwe run and driven ragged on the day. Gathered in by replacement, Jan Trob bumping off for tackler, linking up with Van Veik. He's got pace. And away he goes, stepping past the defence. He can't go all the way though. Support arrives in numbers. Trump who started it all. Offloads. Driving for the line. Yet another try. Johnny Redlinger is celebrating his 44th cap with a try, the second in the match. Namibia, 12 tries, 10 conversions by Kotzer for a record 80 points to six win over Zimbabwe to defend the Africa Cup title. There's a lot of progress for Namibia and that's the most important thing. It's, it's important we progress now, it's important we progress in the World Cup, but it's even more important what we do after the World Cup as well to keep the momentum. You know, it's a great opportunity for the country to really establish itself over the next four or five years as a, you know, as a top rugby nation. You know, if we can break into the top, the top 20 and then keep pushing forward and there's a huge opportunity and a great future hopefully. Namibia captain Rowan Kitsov named Vintuk Draft Man of the Match and accepting his award from Namibia Brewery's managing director Vesi van der Westhuizen. Kitsov also happy with the progress the team was making. I think we're about 80% um, where we want to be. Um, I think the, the character and the, the group of guys, we, we, we're a special bunch of guys and we're becoming brothers now. Um, this last four weeks playing the two tests against Russia, Kenya and today in Zimbabwe, I think it was good preparation going forward. Following their win in the Vintub Draft Friendship Series and retaining the Africa Cup, the Namibia team were entertained by sponsors Namibian Breweries to congratulate Phil Davis and his charges for the manner in which they turned their season around and for reaching number 20 on the world rankings. Namibia will travel to the World Cup as the country with the least number of senior players and with limited resources. Without the support of Vintub Draft, this team would not be able to travel to England as the best prepared Namibian team ever to go to a Rugby World Cup. One of our 
our dreams is, is really to, to get our stadiums full again, um, to give back to, to the Namibian public what they, they used to see in the past and, and that is really passionate guys running on the field playing for, for each other in the country and for us to be to be part of that is, is, is really amazing and it's it's twofold for me. One is um, to be able to contribute to, to such a worthy cause but then also just to, to have a lot of fun and um, to do what you love um, and that's what we do as a business. But here's what it's all about. Namibia's four matches in Pool C starting with that huge date with destiny on September the 24th against the world champions New Zealand in London, then to Exeter for their encounters against Georgia and Tonga. And it will be those two matches that Namibia will be targeting for a win before they meet Argentina in Leicester. Africa champions for a second year. Rugby Africa's General Secretary Mervyn Green doing the honours. For many players, their last performance in a Namibia jersey on home soil, but still a great deal of work to do. They're off to Durban for a training camp with the Springboks. They complete their preparations at home before leaving for London on September the 15th. From Vintook, goodbye. Highlights of the Africa Cup were brought to you by Vintook Draft, proud supporters of Namibia Rugby.